As Devin said, my name is Justin Salninka. I am the director of choral music at Abingdon Friends School. I also teach uh, middle school mathematics and uh, I'm going to talk about the power of personal in education, uh, which is something that AFS, uh, well, this is my third, excuse me, my 12th year at Abington Friends School. It's my 25th year in the classroom. So I've taught at other schools and I can say from personal experience that this is something that Abington Friends does extremely well. Uh, teachers who deeply care about their students and uh, students who uh, bring just so much to the table and, and allow us to create these really wonderful personal connections. So uh, I'm not going to talk too much because I want to introduce uh, Clay, uh, uh, who was a student of mine some years ago, but we have uh, done quite a bit in the time since I taught him in middle school. So uh, Clay, why don't you uh, take it away? Yeah, so hi, I'm Clay. I'm a junior and I have been at AFS since sixth grade now. Um, and yeah, I would just say me and Justin have a very special relationship with each other. You know, he's been my math teacher. Uh, he's been my theater director. He has been my wrestling coach and just an all, all in general, a mentor of mine for uh, quite some time. And so we really have a, um, a special connection to each other. And I would say that um, probably the, the story that um, most shows our relationship with each other um, is in my eighth grade year. Um, I think Justin, you'll obviously. Yeah, how about I'll pull up, I'll pull up a, a picture so uh, people know what we're talking about here. So in my eighth grade year, um, I wanted to do this show that um, our theater director Megan was putting on called Peter and the Star Catcher. I wanted to act in it because, you know, I'm an actor, but um, Megan said, you know, you're in eighth grade and this is an upper school show, so you can't do it. And so I was like, oh man, that stinks, <laughs> darn. Um, but then she gave me this opportunity and, you know, lo and behold, it was honestly one of the best opportunities that I could have had. It was like such a special moment. She said that uh, I could help Justin, who was the musical director for the show. Um, I could do percussion for the show and, and he would, you know, play piano and uh, a bunch of other things. And it was just so special because um, the show, Peter and the Star Catcher, it doesn't really have a lot of clear music that you're supposed to play. A lot of it is up to interpretation. And so Justin and I ended up um, putting together a lot of our own elements into the show. So you can see the so many elements here that, that are not really standard pit orchestra instruments. And um, it, it felt like it wasn't a teacher student type of thing. We were more collaborating and and Justin, you can tell me if I'm wrong here, but it felt like, you know, I could make a suggestion uh, and you could make a suggestion and both of them would be at equal standing. And, and it wouldn't be like if you made a suggestion that instantly overpowered mine. Um, yeah, it felt very Quaker. <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely was... felt like a, like a true collaboration between, uh, b between the two of us. And uh, well, I mean, I, I love this photo because we're just well you can see that i'm like looking out of the side of my eye because I, what it, whenever the photographer took this like there must have been some cue coming up because we are really intently like making sure we get the timing right uh for for whatever was happening at that moment in the show and and there was a lot of that to be honest like right. almost every single moment in the show because because it would be an actor would be running across the stage or doing some action like closing a big chest and we would have to make the sound for that and so we would have to be looking back and forth to make sure that we both were on top of everything. And sometimes Justin might forget a cue or something and I'd have to be like, Justin. Never forgot, what do you, okay, sure. Yeah, maybe During that's rehearsing. Okay. entirely for true, sure. yes, yes. So no, we, I mean, we really were covering for each other and you, you have a microphone uh, everyone can see because you had to burp on command at one point. I did. And then I had a microphone too because I was the alligator. So the, if, for people who aren't familiar with the show, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's what Clay said, uh, there's all these sound effects that have to happen. So you're seeing everything on stage and everything is live. Nothing's pre-recorded. And it was just a joy uh, to work with Clay on figuring out, you know, okay, well, we need this sound. How are we going to make it? Um, Clay, let me pull up the, uh, the other photo here. Mm -hmm. So this was our setup. Mm -hmm. um, 
what do you remember, Clay, when you take a look at this I, I, unbelievable array of instruments? It was just a lot. Like, you can tell there are so many things on stage, and we had to keep track of every single one. There's super random things. There's, like, a boxing ring bell in the back. There's a sheet of metal. There's a broken violin. That violin doesn't work, but we I think we <laughs> used it for, like, yeah, neither of us played the violin. I, we needed we needed like a, a screeching sounds as like doors were creaking open, and the the sheet of metal was it was thunder. I think. thunder. That's thunder. right. That's right. <laughs> we, yeah. we, we, so we're literally back there like shaking this piece of of metal uh, whenever there needed to be to be thunder. And yeah, yeah. I, I would just say there's there's so many elements here that it was almost impossible for us to not have to collaborate in that way. And I would say that because of the relationship that Justin and I had already built, right. you know, I had, I had known him for, for years before that, because we had been so close to each other, it was just really easy to, to dive in and make sure that we were performing at the best of our ability and collaborating in that way, you know? Yeah. Yeah, right on. Yeah, and I think, as I said, this is something that I, Abington Friends School does very well. Uh, you know, Clay is one of those the students and, and teachers and students have this ability to create really uh, great uh, relationships. Uh, great, anything else uh, you wanna say, Clay, before we pass it? Uh, I'd just say, you know, thank you personally for, I, I know this is an open house, but thank you for everything that you've done for me. And I know that in the years in the future, I'll be able to, you know, text you or email you or whatever with some academic or music problem that I have and you'll be there for me. And so I appreciate that. The, the, feeling, the feeling is mutual, sir. Uh, great. So uh, we're going to pass it on to another uh, great duo, uh, my colleague Sheila Pai in the upper school. Hey, Sheila. Hey, Justin. Thank you so much. Nice to hear from you and Clay and everyone else today. Um, uh, welcome everybody. I'm so grateful you're here and making this time to, to hear from us and I'm so glad you're getting to hear from our amazing students. Um, I'm going to let Lily speak first, um, but I am Sheila Pai. I'm the English teacher and upper school diversity clerk. And Lily, uh, why don't you start us off? Great. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Lily and I'm a senior at AFS and I came to AFS in ninth grade. I'm so grateful to be talking to all of you because I've experienced some of the closest relationships when it comes to my teachers here at AFS. After attending two other schools prior to AFS, I really found myself welcomed into this community with open arms, which Sheila, of course, played a huge role in. I mean, where do I start? Um, Sheila has been my rock for these past three years and has always been extremely supportive in every way possible. I remember the first day of English class during my sophomore year when she began class with, I care about you more as a human being than a student, which really opened my eyes to see the care and respect that Sheila gives her students. English has always been my favorite subject in school, so I always met with Sheila to make sure I was heading in the right direction with my essays and other pieces that I was working on. And I could just tell that she was putting in, and like, excuse me, that she was putting her all into the moments that we shared and really pushing me to be the best writer that I can be. When our class was reading Their Eyes Were Watching God, I really loved and was so fascinated by our discussions in class where Sheila served as a great mediator and facilitator for all of our conversations, which would transform the classroom into a safe space for all. She encourages and supports you in every way that she can. And while doing so, she creates respect and trust in her relationships with her students. This just demonstrates firsthand how involved and caring the teachers at AFS really are. As I embark on the college process, I see the relationship between Sheila and I as a huge benefit to my ability to know when to ask for help, how to have a more expansive education through the relationships that you create, and learning how to lean into vulnerability with an educator, which are all very important skills to have in your life. Sheila really helped me find my voice, and for that, I'm very appreciative. Thank you, Sheila. Oh, Lily, you are such a dear. Um, well, I'm Sheila Pai. I am an English teacher at AFS. I've been here seven years and have been teaching for 15 um, in middle school and upper school. And I've gotten the chance to work with Lily both as an English teacher and as upper school diversity clerk because she is a clerk of Ability Aware, which is a group that focuses on learning differences and mental health, which is something that most, most schools don't get to talk about. And Lily has really been at the forefront of leading that. 
Um, and she's so right. Every time that I start any class that I ever teach, I really make sure that they hear that relationships come first with me. Um, it is through our relationship that the learning happens. It's through our relationship that we can support each other and understand better how each student is going to learn. And that mind-body research, I'm such a brain nerd and I really love to know about research of learning. And relationships are the way forward there towards learning because when you are safe and feeling connected, your brain is open and ready to take in information. And so I really focus on that mindfulness and that that relationship because that that sense that you matter needs to come from me so that students know that their ideas matter and that they as a human matter even more than their grades or the content that I care about them as people and that I want them to bring their whole self to the classroom it's really for me about creating those conditions for growth those conditions for learning and um, I happen to benefit from them because I, I get to meet amazing students like Lily and get to hear what are their fears? What are their doubts? And, and what are their concerns? Where are they growing? What are their learning differences? And also like, what are their hopes and dreams? What do they want? What are their goals? And, and I get to have the ability, the blessing, the opportunity to guide and to be a companion along that journey of self-discovery. Now Lily happened to come in with incredibly strong skills across the board with a foundation of writing and reading and thinking. Um, she's also a really quick learner. And so as we would do these skill workshops, she would be picking up these skills. And so I really got a chance to meet with her one-on-one -on -one and push her to her next level. And for her, that was this nuanced, complex level of writing. But even more than that, it was about her being encouraged and supported and finding her own voice and valuing her own expression and valuing her own beliefs and standing strong and firm in what her purpose is in the world. And if you could tell, you know, if you knew her in ninth grade, you would see her being here and shining her beautiful light with you is a testament to all the growing that she has really done inside the class and outside of it. But I do love to bring those ideas and I do love as teachers, we want to bring students experience into the classroom for essays. I want students to write about what they actually care about. I want them to be able to think about what is what are their personal experiences? What are they reflecting on? How are they personally growing? How are they connecting with the readings? And then bring those things out in essays that actually matter to them. It's because I know Lily well. It's because I get to know students well that I can push her, that I can encourage her in the way that best supports her. I can get that delicate balance of that flexibility, that compassion, that support, and also that I believe in you. Let's push to the next level. Let's go and do something hard and have some fun together. Um, and plus, you know, the, the added benefit for me selfishly is that I get to have amazing relationships with some of the most incredible humans on the planet who just happen to be young people and grow up into amazing adults. And I'm so grateful to have a relationship with Lily, somebody who I get to have a friendship with for the, throughout our lives together. These are relationships that last. So really appreciate you, Lily. I appreciate everybody's time today. And I'm gonna turn it back over to Devin for our next steps. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, 